My name is Evangelist Clement Eze. I was once a notorious armed robber, very, very notorious, very, very deadly there. I happen to be the first son in the family of seven. My father was a farmer, though he's now late, and my mother was a petty trader. I don't know what actually went wrong along the line in my life because there was nobody with criminal record in the family. But all of a sudden, I started my journey into armed robbery from my father's house by stealing meat from the pot of soup in our house. To my father, it's a taboo. It must not happen. No child will ever do that. To my mother, it was a mere child's play. So whenever such happens, my father would pick up a cane, beat the hell out of me. And my mother always intervened, saying, don't kill my child for me. My child is not a thief. It's just a, a, a child. We own the soup. We own the meat. And we own the child. This man, what's your problem? Leave my child alone. I started to grow in that habit under the protection of my mother. To her, it was a mere child's play. There is no time for me to go in details on how the whole thing went. But in the year 1976, I was then in Form 3. I met some boys, some group of boys in the same school. I don't want to mention names. What attracted me to these boys was the, 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 the way they spend money in school. Extravagant life. They spend money. They eat anything they want to eat. They dress expensively. Go about with big, big babes. Then, as I told you, I don't want to go into details how I went on. But the devil was moving me from one level to another level to another level to another level until I got to the point I'm going now. When I saw the way these guys live their life in school, they are all living in dormitory. I tried to move closer to one of them to make friends with him. Maybe he will put me through. Because I also want to be like, like them. I succeeded in making him my friend and he eventually opened up to me how they make their money. He said, old boy, we are the big boys, so the landlords in the night. Landlord in the night? He said, yes, okay, I understand. From there, he introduced me to uh, the rest of his friends. They welcomed me and asked me some questions on whether I am ready to do the work they are doing. I said, yes. They said, okay, you cannot just start with us. We have leader. We have a boss. We have somebody who is the ring leader of this guy. So they took me to the man. A very popular leader of armed robbery syndicate in Eastern Park then. And I'm sure that any Igbo man here who has been at, who was at Onisha 1976, 77, 78, 79 must have known or heard about a man called Otondo. That was the man. So the man asked me, do you have a lion heart? I 
I say yes. Can, are you sure you can do this work? I said, sir, since you can do it, I can do it better. The man looked at me and said, I think you are determined. I said, yes. The man said, okay, if you are determined, nobody just joins us. I have, we have armed robbery college. So I will enroll you into one of, uh, as a student in our college, which he called CTI, Criminal, I mean Crime Training Institute. And I was enrolled as a student. Then, I don't want to go into details on how we are trained, but we are drilled and skilled in the act of robbery. We study crime theory and practical. When I was in that armed robbery college, we, we, we study meant so many things, I have no time to go into details. And we go out on operations for practical. I spent one year and six months before I graduated. Not only me. We are many. Because it was a very big Crime Training Institute. On the day of our graduation, there were some men of God on ground to pray for us. Yes. I am telling you today that most of the big men of God you hear about them today, I'm very sorry to say this, most of them has no Christ. All they are after is to pray for us to go and have a successful operation. And when we come back, please don't forget your tithes. We have churches where we pay tithes. We have pastors who pray for us. When I say pastors, not small, small pastors. People, you will not even believe it. Wealthy pastors. Men of God that you see with exotic cars. Because we pay heavy tithes. We pay tithes in millions. After my graduation that day, not only me, we are plenty. I was given my credentials. Which was a pistol, UTC axe, UTC cutlass and a jackknife. And that was how I started. I don't have time to go into details on how we carried out some terrible operations. There's nowhere we can operate. We operate in the morning, we operate in the afternoon, we operate in the night, we operate in banks. We operate anywhere. There was nowhere or there is nowhere then that I cannot enter. I was so deadly then, nobody stopped me. The police cannot stop us. The soldier that everybody fears cannot stop us. Why? If you are a first man, you are trained, I am trained. You have your rifle. I have my rifle. You are a good shooter. I'm a good shooter. So let's meet. As you remember, Adej, and to Yara no Gumbe. That is gone. So you carry rifle, it has no meaning to me. Before you bring it out from your shoulder, I must have opened my own fire. No time to go in details. You agree with me, brethren, that nothing goes forever. Nothing happens forever. Not, not, nothing lasts forever. After much frustration to repent from the Lord, and I refused to change. The hand of God came down on me very hard. We were arrested, tried, and convicted. Because the police could not lay hand on any weapon to confirm robbery, the DPP reply says, 
we have to be tried for breaking, entering, and stealing. Because there was no weapon to confirm robbery. So we, we, have, we, we have up to seven. We were tried and, convict, and convicted for five years imprisonment. And we are taken to Agodi prison here in Ibadan. But because of prison congestion, some prisoners were moved down to Elisha prison. And that was where I began to serve my jail sentence. You know, in prison, so many churches and denominational churches, they used to come to preach in the prison. Coming to preach in the prison to me then had no meaning because in my church I was the choir master. <coughs> All the time I carry gun, kill because I have wasted life. I play keyboard. As a choir master, if I'm playing my keyboard in the church, my pistol will be with me. I am the church member who pays the, 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 the biggest amount of tithes. And my pastor loves me so much. How I make my money is not his business. Pay tithes. That is the code. And as I was serving my jail sentence, the full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International, they came into Elisha prison with a prison outreach. I never knew that it was because of me that they came. 1989, precisely I think November 11th. When they came in with gospel ministration, the man of God that they preached, hey, along the line, I had a word from the man of God. The word was like a bullet. The word pierced my soul. Hear me, brethren. I was so deadly then. I have wasted life to the extent I never believed that something could bring tears out of my eyes. But that day, I had the word of God that was different from the words I was hearing. And when utter call was made, I took a step. And tears was coming down from my eyes. The tears was so much that the man of God asked me, my friend, this tears is too much. What have you done? I said, hey, sir, I've, I've, I've overstepped my boundary. I have wasted lives. Ah, it's too much. The man said, because you have wept for your sin today, you will not weep again in life. I said, amen, amid tears. He prayed for me and I gave my life to Christ. Now, something surprised me. The men of God that come to prison for ministration come only once in a day. They come by 4 p.m. in the evening. But in my own case, the following day, the full gospel business ministry international, they followed me up. Maybe God spoke to them about who I was, I don't know, or how deadly I was, I don't know. Two to three people will come in the morning, they will pray for me, they will cancel me. Quality cancel. In the afternoon they will come. In the evening they will come. Every day they will come. It got to a stage, they went to the prison authority and demanded that they don't want me to be eating prison food. That they will bring in food for me from outside. Pounded yam and a goosey soup in the prison. Money is me. Ah. And this thing went on and on and on and on. The caring was so much. The advice was so much. I, I, I don't understand. And I gave my life to Christ totally. And the guy, people saw that this man has changed. But unfortunately, brethren. A night before the day I was to leave prison, my friends came in the night. They gathered themselves together in the cell and said, 
Brother Clement, do you mean that you have given your life to Christ? You will now go out and be, begin to carry Bible? Oh, what? All these men you see who come in to preach, they have made their millions before they gave their life to Christ. You that has nobody wants to go out and be preaching, hunger will tear you apart. What you do is this. The Bible you read says, add the virtue of knowledge to faith. When you leave tomorrow, we will give you address of some unrobbers outside. What you do is, when you leave visit tomorrow, carry out some robbery operations. When you make little millions, you can buy a bus for transportation or open up a business. Hey, then you can serve God. Brethren, it was so unfortunate. I agreed to that advance. As I left the prison yard in the morning, I went straight to the address I collected. And that was how I was connected with another guy. That same day, we carried out robbery operation at Elation. The following day, another operation. The third day, another operation. Brethren, this money came again, but I forgot about the bus to buy. I did not remember again about opening a business. And after three months, the hand of God came down hard on me again. And I was arrested again. Tried and convicted for another three years. At Ile Ife. Because in Lara prison, at Ife, it's a small prison. It cannot contain any prisoner with uh, that uh, long sentence. So I was taken back to Elisha. I was taken back to Elisha. When I got to Elisha, the second time, they opened the door, I entered. All the prisoners shouted, ah, born again is back again, born again is back again. I could not stand the shame. I buried my head in shame. I was thinking that the full gospel will come back again. Ask me, what did I, why, why did I have to come back? What will I say? I don't know how the full gospel got the news. That same day they came. Dr. Freeman asked me, Brother Clement, what happened? What went wrong? I was weeping. I said, I don't know. I don't understand. Friends advice. Friends advice. They told me not to worry. I should clean up myself and continue. And the caring was more better than the previous judge sentence. They stood by me with quality counsel. If I sneeze, they would bring in a doctor to check me. The, the caring was so much, they, they, they now begin to give me a very close monitoring. And thank God by His grace. That was how they planted my feet in Christ Jesus. When the three years sentence finished, I stepped into the waiting hand, hands of the full gospel. They sent two people to follow me to Ibado to know where I'm going to stay, the ministry that I will stay with. They followed me like that. The same full gospel of the International, they sponsored my wedding. On the day of my ordination, because my ordination took place in Agodi prison, the full gospel was there. The Nigerian police band from a LA headquarters was on stand that day, because the police was very happy with me that, ah, God saved somebody. After my ordination, to, to get a wife became a problem. Anybody who hears my testimony will run away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ladies, we are scared. But eventually, through the prayers of the full gospel of the Fellowship International, the Lord entered into the heart of a lady who said, I will go with you. 
and on the day of my marriage, they sponsored everything they were there. I thank God for the full gospel. Look, they are doing a great job. My salvation to me is a mystery. It's a mystery. From that moment, the Lord has begun to bless me. I spent 14 years without a child after marriage. And when I said, God, I, 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 won't I have a child? And God said, shut up! Remember the day you saw a child lying on the mat and you pressed the child to death? Remember the day you smashed a child on the wall and the child scattered? Remember the day you took a child from a woman and fling the baby into the river? So now you say you want a child. But thank God, at the end of the day, his mercy manifested. Before, I, hello, please, before I hand over, let me say this. Let me say this. To the police, be careful of bullion van drivers. Messengers, those of you that have companies, be careful of anybody who knows the movement of money. Your driver, your secretary, your messenger, 